going to call the uh, select board meeting for Wednesday, September 4th to order. Uh, is anyone here for public comment? Okay. Review of minutes for July 10th, 2024. Well, Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the minutes for July 10th, 2024. I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to move out of order uh, to the administrative business to hear the one-day wine and malt license uh, for the couple of requests. Okay. Um, Second. Okay. I think we got two for this one. Okay. All right. We have, should we just go through all of them right now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, we have a one day, uh, do we have to vote on moving it out of order? Yes. Okay. Um, all those in favor of moving it out of order? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, administrative business, one day wine and malt license for the VFW post two, uh, sorry, 423 barbecue on September 14th, 2024. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, one day wine and malt license for the Ghost and Goblins road race on, uh, we have two dates? Uh, those dates are, that's old home day. Those are the old home day dates. So okay. Must be, I think we Sorry. 26th. 26th? Yes, thank you. September 26th. So moved. October. October. Sorry, October 26th, 2024. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, okay. Best of luck. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Do we have to approve the road race too? Yeah. Know. Have you covered that at all? Or like yeah. street closures and stuff? <laughs> I don't know. That wasn't on there. That, it's a separate line oh, item under old and new business. <laughs> so we can, you want to move that? To go out of order too? Uh, make a motion to move out of order to the old and new business, Ghost and Goblins 5K road race. Okay. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Ghost and Goblins 5K road race. All right. Sorry, what did you say, Mary? Move? Yeah. Okay. Second. Second. I would just add um, with our normal check with public safety officials to make sure they're on board with everything. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nope. All set. All right. Sorry, let me get organized here. Okay. We have the um, veterans agent, Brendan Bailey, for a veterans committee update. Can you just state your name? In the microphone. I'm the town veteran service officer. So I just want to give you a follow-up on you know, we met myself and um, Matt Kovas, who was the chair at the time, and Mike Ward met with Ms. McPhee, who represented the Legion, and Mr. Barrett, who represented the VFW. And one of the one of the issues that they claimed was that Clinton was one of the few towns where the veteran service officer actually reported to a town administrator or manager that, that they they, they, they said most of the towns around here, the VSO actually reported to a veterans a board. So we said we'd look into it. Um, Mike had Angela and me look into it, and we couldn't find any towns around here that, that do it that way. But, um, you know, it, you know could go, it kind of rolls into my second part, though. You know, we, we checked around that no, they, they do have. But in doing that, I wanted to look into I know we had uh, Mr. Jakonski was here about two, two or three months ago and had recommended a Memorial Day committee. So when we were when I was talking to the to the VSOs about how, how they're who they uh, reported to and whatnot, I also said to them, "How do you work your memorial?" They kind of did it all at once, and there really wasn't a, a standard answer. Um, a lot of the, um, the towns around here are, like are, are not just solo. You have a, a veterans office who covers a district, you know, four or five smaller towns. So they, you know, obviously they're not running four or five memorial days. So they have you know either committees like you know, when I started. I, I know some of you were around when I started, but. Um, you know, Mr. Vanass and his group had been doing Memorial Day here as long as I could remember. When I started, he came in my office and said, here's what their group handles, and Brendan, if you do kind of the coordination with the town departments, and our town departments, you guys know, it, it was easy. 
But as we as we went on, the, the guys that were helping, the people that were helping Mr. Panas passed away. And toward the end, when, when COVID hit, it was myself and Mike Ward that were doing it. And it wasn't much because we both, I think we did one here in the chamber and one out in the, in the auditorium. And then when Mr. Benass couldn't do it anymore, Mr. Jakonski stepped up. So it's been the three of us. But you know, now that we're back doing it, we realize you, 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 don't, you just can't do it with three people. So after Mr. Jakonski had spoke, uh, I had four residents caught, three residents at the time, and then, and then um, Mary Rose talked to me last week. I had four residents that are interested in, in being on a, a Memorial Day council, if you will. So I'm just, I don't think I need your, I don't mean to shun you, I don't think I need your approval. I'm just kind of letting you know. But what I would want to do is, I told every one of them I, after the summer, I, you know, see how it go, because I don't do much in the summer other than order the flags. There's not much going on prior, you know, from now for next Memorial Day. But I would like to um, contact the three veterans organizations in Clinton and see if I can get one person, one resident that's also like maybe on one of their boards or at least attends their meetings to be, you know, kind of, the, and they, they meet with us. So you end up having five residents along me. So you have six people, which I think is a good number, and then everyone could go back to their groups and, and go from there and just, you know, see, you know, everybody knows, you know, has different ideas. And we've talked about how, you know, you could bring a different group in that no one thought about. And I have a checklist and groups that we have, so you'll, you'll see what's going on. But um, that's really it. I, I, you know, I, I, I think the support, I will say, almost I think I know, you know, in the, in the nine years, nine and a half years I've been here, whether it's this current board or the boards before, the support that the select board has given the, the veterans of town, and, and whether it's, you know, the budget I bring every year or, or you know, I know right before I started, I think you guys did the monument over outside, but we had the, the square we don't, um, dedicated to uh, Andrew Bibbo at the corner. It, it was, you know, it, the, the, um, tax, or the recycling and trash reduction that we have for veterans. I came to the board, I presented it, and, and you know, there were some questions, but they, the support that the veterans get in Clinton is, is phenomenal. So that's kind of where I'm at. If anybody has any questions or anything to add, and try to answer it. Madam Chair, yeah. I, I don't have any questions for Brennan, but I'm just curious, when, is this the same agenda item for that I'll be discussing the, um, the Veterans Committee? Is this the same, is this the same agenda topic? Um, possibly not, sorry. Yeah. That was just kind of a general yeah, discussion about the uh, Veterans Committee. Wait. <laughs> oh, sorry, maybe no, it was. I, I think it was intended, intended to be. This whole, the whole discussion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go for it. Um, well, it, does anyone does anyone have any questions for for Brendan? No, not that. Okay. So I just wanted to update in a, a an effort to try to also help out with this. I know we've had a couple meetings with the uh, the VFW. Um, we've had some members come to some meetings here. So I met with the VFW just to discuss at a previous meeting. We had a discussion about forming a this veterans committee. Um, and I just, I met with them just to kind of see, you know, were they making any progress and, and, and what were some of their ideas? How did they, how did, how did they envision this? So I, I met with them and I, what I offered to do um, with, and I wanted to bring it back to the board for you guys to discuss if, if you're comfortable with it, is I, I just want to temporarily um, help this group get a committee formed um, and like, like uh, Mr. Bailey said, it would be made up, comprised of, it wouldn't just be the VFW. The VFW would have a couple of representatives on this committee, but then there's other, the PAV would have a couple. Um, so there would be a veterans committee. It would totally be just a community, like I likened it to the, uh, the Friends of the Clinton Seniors. It's a community group that um, they, you know, they, they get together and they might have some ideas, they might have some questions. And um, the, only, the only thing, so, Really, all we did was talk about getting the committee formed. Um, the only the only discussion topics that that we discussed were was one was Memorial Day. That was that was a big one that um, they wanted to talk. And the other thing that I um, promised to do with those guys was just take a look at. Um, I mean, I think I think um, Mr. Bailey does a great job with following the job description that we have. But what I what I told the VFW we could do is we can take a look at some comparable job descriptions for some veterans offices around the area for some comparable towns and just make sure that our job description lines up is, is somewhat similar to what other towns are providing and just see if there's, you know, is there any services that some other towns are, are providing that like that, that we're not, you know, I, I don't know. 
Um, so that was the, the, the two initial discussion topics like for this committee, uh, if it does get formed or that I'm trying to help them form, would just be those, those two things. It would be the, the first thing would be kind of taking a look at the job description, comparing it with other towns. And the second thing would be what would be the committee's role in, in the uh, uh, um, Memorial Day uh, parade and how, and how could they help out. So um, anyway, so that's, I just wanted to um, bring it back to the board. I, um, I let the Madam Chair know that I was gonna be attending that meeting and just gathering some information. So um, that's, if, as long as nobody objects, if somebody else wants to join me, I'm more than welcome if you wanna have two people, but if, if, if nobody objects, I, I would like to continue to assist this, uh, this Veterans Committee to get formed. And then once it's formed and it, we think it's self-sustaining, I can easily just kind of peel off and let it just, uh, let it just run on its own. But uh, that's just what I wanted to bring to the board to discuss today. Yes. Brendan has a game plan for Memorial Day. We have the committee. I think he's just spelled out how he intends to reach out to all three of the veteran organizations in Clinton and have one representative to make a committee of six. So um, I thought that was pretty much the game plan. As did I. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it sounds like something that's yeah, I think six uh, a workable. I know you have some veterans on your committee. Yeah, so there's, of the four, I haven't spoken yet to the, to the veteran so of the four residents, two are veterans. Right. And, and, and two are non-veterans. All right. Is, do the veterans groups feel like this is more like an advisory committee, or is, I just want to make sure we're on the same page, like, of the goals of the committee. Is it to, like, provide assistance for Memorial Day and kind of reestablish that committee or I just want to make sure that everyone involved here is clear on, on what the end goal is. I think the Memorial Day, um, the Memorial Day parade and that, I think that is a part of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's the only thing. I, mean, um, I think the, the first step is getting the committee formed and then once the committee's formed then we can list the things that they want to discuss. Um, those are the only two. Those are the only two discussions that that we had about like future um, topics. Uh, most of the most of the meeting with them was just a discussion on um, how I could be of assistance in getting the getting the committee formed. Uh, Ms. I'm sorry. Oh, no, again, I, I guess, Madam yeah. Chairman, I'm just saying that. I guess I would go back to the fact that, I mean, the veterans agent already has a game plan, and I think if you have yeah. too many eggs in the basket, then yeah. you're, it's, it's not productive. And that's yeah. all I'm saying. I'm saying I think he's the veterans agent, he's got a game plan, and I think that's what we should go with. And, yeah, go ahead. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, Maggie. And that's kind of what, if, if, I, if I, I email all three of them or reach out to them, whatever I do it, and they put one person on that board, my expectation would be that one person I don't, whichever club they, whatever organization they would go back to the other three, right. you know, the and say, two, yeah. and, you know, just like mm -hmm. the, the other residents were on here, would go back to their their friends in their group and say, mm -hmm. hey, can you know, can you you know, can you help do this part? It wouldn't be just these five people going, hey, we're just going to do it all. That's kind of how Mr. Van asked it. He had other people that would help him, and yeah. uh, that's kind of I, I saw it. I just I agree with you. I don't. That's why I was trying to keep it at a manageable number. You know, just, you know, yeah. five or six people. And yeah, that's exactly sorry, you know, what I was just gonna point out is if you have, you know, if if the veteran organizations want to create a committee them amongst themselves in some capacity, then that one person who would be on this committee could then represent any of their uh, interests. And, um, but it, it sounds like, you know, um, sounds like there's mm -hmm. two things going on yeah. at the same time that right. might have different expectations, but I, I agree, I, uh, Mr. Bailey, I, I agree with um, his vision and, and suggestion, and I think that's in line with what was originally proposed by Mr. Chikonsky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just a little concerned about the like kind of advisory component of this because it kind of opens the door to like, are, are there citizens who would like to advise the DPW superintendent about things or, you know, kind of add 
facilities director. You know, it kind of, so I, I'd like to see it just kind of maybe continue with the Memorial Day group, you know, and start to establish a regular cadence of those meetings. I know it's, I know that Memorial Day isn't for, uh, you know, another 10 months, but. It comes up quick. <laughs> it does. I don't disagree. Whenever you're planning a big event, so yeah. even if it's, you know, a month in, or a meeting in early October, December, you know, just, and then as it get cl closer, just that regular cadence, I'm sure that they're, you know, if there's additional feedback that these groups have about the role and the position, we can certainly hear it, but, um, and if there is like a concern about a job description, I feel like that would be something that would be kind of outside of regular, you know, people can send an email and, and make that suggestion, but I guess I just don't like the precedent of like the advisory portion of, of this. When we met, uh, myself, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Ward, and yeah. some of the representatives from, from those groups. Um, you know, one, uh, one of, some of the feedback we received was basically, in, uh, I guess, improving communication both ways. And mm -hmm. I think based upon the structure of what you're proposing, then that would allow, that would fulfill that, right? And. It, you know, if there, as someone had mentioned earlier, um, information can be disseminated both ways, right? If there's something that the veterans want to propose, then that could be voiced through that one representative to that, that committee and, and vice versa. So, um, but that was, you know, something we heard and, and it sounds like Mr. Bailey has it um, included in his proposal. Okay. okay. Um, with all due respect, I. I, I respect the board's opinion on this, but it's it's a community group. Even as a private citizen, I could join it if I wanted to. So I'm still planning on attending those meetings and helping out where I can. But it's noted that that you are not, um, you know, in favor of of me doing that. I understand that, but I feel strongly enough about it that um, I would like to still help with that committee being formed. For to help with the Memorial Day parade. No what I originally discussed. Okay, I don't think that committee exists. It, that's it doesn't yet, that's, the, that's, the, that's what I'm saying is that like there's a, there is a desire for it to be formed. And I would like to be a part of helping this group get that committee formed. And like I said, if it, I, I get it if the, the board doesn't um, think it's if they're not in favor of me doing it, you know, I, I get it, but I, I'm also a private citizen as well, not just a select board member. Okay, so you are going to say we'll move forward with your Memorial Day committee. Yeah. As can I show in there? As, 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 once I get in contact with all of them, every, you know, I'll, I'll put my, I'll CC Mike on all the emails too, but, you know, having a member of the select board is off, you know, obviously helps me. So if you have any, you know, you guys have anything you, you Mary Rose can bring it. Yeah. The other people are on the, the have content. If, if they're still, you know, if they're still interested, if not, I'll find, you know, I'll, I'll get others, but yeah. it's a good Let's mix. Let's start there. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to follow up on the conversations I've had, the meeting that you had, like what is, how is this moving forward, yeah. I guess, because uh, it had been a topic of a couple of meetings. I guess if, if you want to meet with veterans groups in town, I think that's your prerogative, but... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we, just, we can just leave it there. Okay. Anything else? No, thank you for coming in, though. Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thanks, buddy. All right, next up we have the um, community, and community and Economic <laughs> Development <laughs> Office um, update as well with Phil Duffy and downtown consultant Leah Della. <laughs> Good evening, members. Um, we're happy to see you. Um, we have three agenda items to speak to, and um, on the first one, I'm going to let Lee take the lead. Before you start, Lee, can I just ask ah. you one question? Yeah. 
Carly. What, what is the painting on Depot Square? What is that saying? That is an it? abstract piece of art. No, I'm absolutely <laughs> kidding. No. Um, I, every is, time I go by there, I look at it's, it. It's, it's a Rothko. It's it. very expensive. No. I mean, I think the one at the fire station is spectacular. Didn't she say. do a lovely job? She did a Cheryl spectacular job. Cheryl Hughes really drawing. hit it out of the park on that one. Yeah. Um, so let me answer your first question, and I can speak to the utility boxes, and then we'll back into the mural. So okay. the square on the, the white square on the wall is not an abstract piece of art. It is a test patch for a bottom base coat of paint that we're trying out on the depot wall to ensure that that wall can be sealed up. No, 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 not the wall. Like the painting the on, on the box. The, she's talking about that. Like I'm talking the about the box. Oh, oh the, no. the utility, utility box. You're talking about the utility box. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. I thought you were talking about the white square box. No, 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 no. no the utility box. I still can't figure out what it, what it is. I think Which it's one? In, it's incomplete. The one, the one, um, the one on the depot, depot square. The okay. depot square. So, I don't think it's... The one at Depot Square mm -hmm. and the one that is at the end of High Street by the fence by the post office are in midpoint. They are not done yet. Okay. Um, the artist had some um, personal matters they needed to deal with and step away from the project for a few weeks. And as of actually yesterday, is back at it and we'll be finishing those two boxes. So okay. there's one artist to finish those two boxes. I was boxes. just curious because I just couldn't yeah. figure it out. And I'm no, looking it's, at it's, it. no, it's not super high concept. Said, it's just not done. What the heck is that? Yeah. I had the same yeah. question too. Okay. I was like, yeah. what's that? So, sorry, when you said box, I thought you meant the white no. so before, square. So, I didn't mean to. Yeah. No I problem. Wanna, no know, problem. Take your train of thought. So, I was the, just, I said, well, she's going to be there tonight. Yeah. I'm going to ask No problem. So the theme, the theme of the one that's going to be at the corner of Maine and Water there is it's going to be about, um, to celebrate the diversity of all of the different countries of origin of the people that live in Clinton. So you're going to see a Brazilian flag, you're going to see an Irish flag, you're going to see a Canadian flag, you're going to see all types of things. So it's to celebrate multiculturalism on that box. Um, the one at the end of High Street is going to be celebrating Fuller Field and the history of it. Um, obviously there's Shell Hughes's box down by the fire station, which is beautiful. And then actually the box that's next to Zaytoon's um, was done by a local um, younger woman um, named B. Wig, who was very talented. And she took the time to research the Bigelow Carpet Factory and actual carpet patterns that were produced there. And she met with Terry um, and got some actual patterns and painted that as an homage to the manufacturing history of, of the town. So, okay. So they're all four little different. One quick question, Madam yes. Chair. Mm -hmm. um, are, how do we know that our diversity is fully diverse? I mean, not to fall in the strip. Like, do we did, do we have some kind of census report we're working off of, or is there any concern that we're going to offend anybody? Um, if we offend anybody, I'm sure we'll see um, bumper stickers and decals that fill in the flags. Well, I'm sure I'll hear about it. It's <laughs> <That's> my <laughs> exactly. problem. Okay. The mighty, mighty Boston's will be represented at a later time via <laughs> bumper sticker. Yes. Um, so yes. No, we we we. We're mindful of that, so it's meant to be good, but we don't. Okay. Yes. Um, and then, as far as the box, as the white box that is currently painted on the depot wall, that is a test patch for base paint, special base paint to seal the wall, um, to keep the moisture from coming through um, for the mural project. And so the first project is yeah. the making so, it public. Okay, so the first project related to the white box on Depot Well is that last uh, fall we applied and won a grant from the New England Foundation for the Arts. Um, they do a um, session every year where they pick about eight different towns that apply from all across the Commonwealth, large ones, small ones, urban ones, rural ones. Um, and we won and we were part of this class and went through a um, eight week class of how to do a call for artists equitably and fairly, and uh, came out the other side of that as the grant. They award you a grant for $15,000 to go have a piece of what's considered temporary art done in town. Um, temporary, in our case, meaning mural. Um, and so after some discussion and selection, we have elected to go forward with a call for artists, which went out a couple weeks ago, to cast a wide net to get a professional muralist to come and um, do a mural on the wall at Depot Square. Um, in front of you is the actual call for artists, um, which is a multi-page document there. 
um, attached to the back of it is a very rudimentary photograph of the wall and hashing off the section of the wall that we're discussing. The intention is to do a base layer, a single base color on the entire length of the wall from the depot building, if you're looking on the right, all the way to the bottom of the staircase. Um, but then have a mural applied to a t approximately 20 by 40 section of the wall where it's marked off there next to the, to the right of the staircase. Um, the overall timeline for this is that the call for artists is out there now. Um, the deadline for submissions is September 27th. Um, after that, um, we have a committee, and we'll talk about that in a second, who will review the basic applications and pick up to three finalists. From there, those three finalists are um, awarded a, a small stipend to then go create individual concept, like a specific concept for the wall, submit them to us by the end of December, basically. From there, after the new year, this committee will pick that person, interview these people, make sure that they have the proper background. And from there in the spring, we move forward with executing it, which weather has to be, you know, can't do in the dead of winter. And then, so the goal is to get this up and going and become a reality um, towards the end of spring. Um, you'll see on the back of the packet, the selection committee or, or review committee is the technical term. And you'll notice that there is one spot open. Um, let me back up. The people that we've selected to be on this committee reflect different aspects of town. We have um, the middle school art teacher, um, who is wonderful and exciting, um, to have um, Suhani Bhatia. Um, she's on board, so we have schools represented. Um, we have Shad Quill, who owns Valhalla Tattoo. So we have local resident, local business owner, and obviously, you know, kind of roles in the artistic world. Um, Danielle Shavo, if you haven't met her yet, she's fantastic. She's the marketing manager at the Icon Museum. She has um, her undergrad and a master's in fine arts. She also worked for Discover Central Mass as well as the city of Worcester um, and dealt a lot with those large mural projects and the marketing around it and communications and community aspect of it. So she's a wonderful asset. Um, and then you'll see on there that there's a, a me, um, and then also, I would like to request that one of you um, be the representative from the select board to participate. Um, and you can decide that tonight or decide it and at your next meeting, whichever you feel is appropriate. Um, it's a short time commitment because we're going to move in a very linear fashion. It'll just be um, maybe one in-person meeting and a couple of Zooms to just review the first batch of applications review the finalist applications, and then to do a couple of quick, um, probably Zoom-based interviews with the finalist um, for their organizational skills and collaborative spirit. What am I forgetting? Nothing. Um, if you, if the, 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 the grant was awarded um, as part of the process of, of identifying uh, a project and a location. We developed a list of possible Art types, types of art installation, and um, also locations. Uh, I think this site was prioritized because it, it may have, as kind of um, being located on a, one of the gateways into the downtown, it has the potential to kind of form that func that threshold function that art can do. Um, it's an opportunity, if done correctly, to beautify Depot Square, which is kind of the next frontier of our downtown district. Um, and then, really, the proof will be in the pudding, finding a competent muralist um, who, with a with a good hand, um, and the right content that is neither kind of that is neither alienating to people nor um, kind of boring. <laughs> you know, you know that uh, that is something that the community can can embrace, and that's where uh, the committee's review and interviews with the artists come. Hey, just. Uh, yeah, I have one question. I, I know I've seen on Chronicle that there have been some very talented artists who have done some beautiful murals in different communities. How do you tend to reach out? Like, I mean, yeah. are, you, are you going on certain websites or? It's a combination. So um, because the grant was given by NIFA, they have their own very large database of artists. 
and they have newsletters and they have one of their biggest things is they have a, a opportunity newsletter that goes out to thousands of artists. So we're part of that. We were in that, I think it was la the end of last week. Mm -hmm. um, the Mass Cultural Council is sharing this with their, through their newsletters and updates. Um, the Worcester Business Improvement District, um, who we have a nice rapport with, has um, agreed to share it with their contacts. Um, and also, it's, I posted it to just certain you know, like Facebook groups of like local artist opportunities, regional art, artist opportunities, and we're just going to keep pumping it and keep going and going. Um, the owners of CC Lowell, which is a, a large art um, supply store in Worcester, where pros go, um, they have their own database and newsletter. They're sharing it for us, so we are trying to cast as wide a net yeah. as possible. Sounds good. So tell your friends. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows, I'm your list. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. one question. So yeah. based upon the, the image where I see the lines yep. indicating where the mural will go, mm -hmm. has there been any thought or discussion about extending it to the bridge? Not so much the mural, but just by looking at it, if you're, you know, if you have a mural in that location, but then the bridge is staying the same. Well, yeah, we really haven't, but for two reasons. One, it, well, the chief one is budget, um, and really to prepare the, the, the arch of the bridge over Main Street. That, I mean, the wall that's, that, that is being proposed is actually steps forward of, of the road. It's, it's, the thick, it's the depth of the stairs that go up. So it's a different plane. That arch um, needs a lot of attention, and it might be better to clean it and maybe do some remedial repair than, than to put paint over it. I'm concerned that it wouldn't, I'm concerned that it would look wouldn't look good. Um, it's filthy right now, and uh, so yeah, there's there's definitely thought given to it, but but not in this phase. Um, we had applied under a separate grant program. I don't believe we are awarded. We should know next week. But to the Safe Streets for All pro, uh, uh, National uh, National Federal Highway Administration program, we had applied for a demonstration project to install lighting under those tunnels. Uh, but I don't. I heard we had a conversation with Senator. Well, come from our hand staff yesterday. It sounds like we got the grant money, but we the, the the study money, but we didn't get the demonstration project money. So we were kind of looking to kind of address that portion of that threshold with some with some lighting. Um, but it doesn't appear. The word I got, not official, is that we didn't get that funding. But yeah. is that railroad property? That's actually owned by um, Mr. O'Connell. Maurice, Mr. O'Connell. It is. Technically owned by the railroad. Oh, no. it is, <laughs> but we had a great time looking into this. Um, it is technically owned by the railroad, but there's a legal agreement that um, the property owner of Mr. O'Connell, the, the other Mr. O'Connell, um, who owns the building, is has um, maintenance and ownership obligations for the wall. Um, so he has the duty of maintaining the wall, but. He how far does that extend? I mean, so that it, archway, it, does it extend to the archway no, or no? It doesn't. It's just it's just that area that was built forward of the um, of the, the railroad. So as far road. as the archway, railroad? We talked to the railroad, railroad. Company. Yes. And we did have that discussion we, we with them. Did, is that, we were fortunate they were very collaborative and actually came out from New York and came out and met with us on site to discuss things. So we we're very pleased with their feedback. So. Great. Um, and last thing, just it's, you'll see it in there, mentioned that um, it is our intention to put some fencing around the bottom of that staircase so that people can no longer access that staircase. We don't want to, one, it's a public safety concern. Two, you don't want to create an attraction of this, um, of a mural and then give people access to run up a staircase that's questionable to then pose with the thing. So um, there'll be some fencing around it and it is part of the conversation to have with the muralist of is there a way that we want to incorporate the fencing or what's behind the fencing or strapping or decorating the fence to incorporate it with the overall mural? So I think at the end of the day, as Phil said, it's a beautification effort on an area of town that's an important gateway so that it speaks to the caliber of the town. So. And the stairs are the property, that's where that uh, yep. joint partnership. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the best? It's a unique set. Yeah. Technically, the railroad owns that wall, but as we mentioned, it's the property of the private property owner who has responsibility to maintain it. 
maintain the wall. Um, the railroad doesn't, has no problem with the mural being painted there. But to your point about it, I think if we asked to extend that mural to the archway, it'd be a totally different process. I mean, the railroad has a completely different process you have to go through. I'm not even sure you they would approve yeah. it. But, it's um, a very long process. We're going to have to have, and we already have a draft of a license agreement with the property owner. Because obviously, uh, you know, to do this, the artist has to go on their property, on their wall. So if we're comfortable to get this license agreement signed, it shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, it's a, read these deeds, it's, you know, whatever, whenever it involves a railroad, it's unique. <laughs> yeah. And I have to compliment Mr. O'Connell, the property owner. He's been nothing but collaborative and responsive and, and very community-minded on allowing us to do this. So. Yeah. Um, well, public art can be such a great... Uh, a great boon to the local economy and for you know uh, benefit to the community. So I'm excited about this. Um, is anyone interested in sitting on the committee? If not, I'm happy to volunteer. If you want, that's fine. Sounds like you. All right. Okay. Well, okay. I'm your representative. We'll pencil you in. Okay. Great. Okay. So, yeah, so we're going to proceed with the. Um, with the artist solicitation. I will also be looking at um, finalizing a number on what it would cost to do, what we're looking to do comprehensively. You know, we have $15,000, but um, you know, some of that work, you know, if we were to address the entirety of that length of wall, we need to no, nail down what that number may be. I know that we've had some preliminary conversations. Yeah, we, uh, we have numbers on power washing and base coating the entirety of the wall from the stairs to the building on the right. Um, so we have those numbers, and that's the intention is to wash the whole thing and base painted, but as far as the mural's concerned, so we, have to, we can only afford to do a section of it. Um, so, but that's okay, we gotta, we gotta crawl before we run, right? Yeah. Maybe people yeah. see, they'll see the value of it and they'll see that, you know, the support to the businesses and the residents going into that section and maybe we go back at it again another time for the rest of it. So. Gotta start somewhere. Gotta start somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. That's right. Madam Started Chair. with utility boxes and we're moving on up. Yeah, so. I saw you have a, a honorarium of $1,000. Do you think that's competitive as far as attracting? Yeah, we checked. We, yeah, we t and that was wonderful about this course with NEFA is that not only did we, you know, did I get to learn about how to do this properly, but also got to check with a lot of different towns and a, lo a lot of different sizes of what would be appropriate. So I believe it should be a Thank you. Madam Chair, yes. one question. Sure. Yeah. Um, is there, how long are these murals intended? Are it, like if someone paints a mural, it's going to be on there for like until it fades away, or is it something that we're going to revisit every number of years and have somebody else paint something new? That's to be decided down the road. So okay. the intention is that it would remain intact and be in good shape for at least two years. Okay. Um, and then to look at it after that and say, okay, do you love it? Do you want to touch it up? Do you want to do something new? Go get a, a separate grant, and we add to it, and we, you know, yep. that kind of thing. Um, but I think that the condition of the current wall calls for it that it's going to be an improvement. And mm, I take, agree. Yeah. Um, so. so my follow-up question to that is: so if we're going to, if this is going to be intended to be around for at least a couple of years, do we have? Is there any sort of like a maintenance game plan? Like the mural goes up, right? Yeah. A month later, if someone goes up with a can of spray paint and just, you know, defames it. Like, who? who so is that's going to be part of the conversation with the muralist, and that's why I tried to be clear in the call for this. This is a for professional muralist. This isn't for somebody who's got a knack for painting and this kind of thing. Because one of the parts of the conversation we're going to have is what should be the top coat of this thing? Right. Is there a graffiti layer, which they make special things? And then have a discussion of do we have a, you know, a certain line item for emergencies of, um, Sorry, um, you know, for for the sake of graffiti or whatnot, do we need to deal with that? Um, hopefully, this is a point of pride. Yeah. And yes, things happen, but if it's a point of pride and we've got a lot of eyeballs on it, that hopefully people are respectful of it. Right. Um, and if we need to talk down the road about pivoting in a certain way of blocking or landscaping, the whatever it will be, I mean, hopefully, this is the beginning of a lot of opportunity to activate that area in a number of different ways. Okay. So hopefully there's something that's... So, but I, I guess in similar terms, my question is, if yeah. it does get, if yeah. it gets defamed in any way, mm -hmm. right, if it gets damaged with mm -hmm. somebody, are we 
going to address it? Like, are we, is the, like, or, yeah. you know, can the DPW help? Can, like, well, like, that's, that's going to be part of the conversation. It, okay. would, it would fall, it would not be the responsibility of the artist to come back and fix it. Yeah, it right. It would fall yeah. on the, on the town. Yeah. Yeah. to us yeah. to maintain it yes. as best as we can. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. All yeah. right. Thank you. Okay. For what it's worth, my best friend, uh, he's 76, um, architect and painter, when he was on a, took a break in college in 1972, he painted a, a, Jap a, a mural of a Japanese water print, block print on the side of a townhouse in Georgetown with Benjamin Moore house paint. 52 year late, years later, the people in the neighborhood have repainted it like four times. So it's still up there 52 years later. Yeah. So, yeah. so people embrace it. Anything else? Okay. Questions? I think that's it. Okay. Um, so that was the first thing. The next agenda item is open lots on High Street. So we're here to yes. Uh, uh, to hear what the, the board's concerns are and to get, give any update or information we can. Was this mine, Julie? Yep. Yeah. So I just wanted to. We kind of talk about this. It feels like annually. Um, there's a couple entranceways onto High Street that I think could, it would be, if we could work with the property owner, they could um, be beautified a little bit. And one of the ones that we talk about a lot, and I'm hoping we can maybe get some focus on it for, if it's probably too late to do anything about it this year, but maybe in the spring, is um, working with that, the property that's between Abishan's and then the, the walkway from the St. John's parking lot. Mm -hmm. yep. I know Abishan's does work with that property owner because they do take up a portion of that area but one of the things we were talking about was um doing and i think we did have conversations with the property owner he was like open to it but some of the things we were talking about was just like simply putting some kind of a path maybe a couple picnic tables just landscape the area maybe some lighting possibly maybe some steps from the parking lot up onto that level yeah. um so i was just i just kind of wanted to bring it up for discussion to see if it's something that we can get on the radar um it's certainly something, like you said, that's been on everybody's radar for a while. Um, we as a department have made efforts for that to come to reality and um, the property owner declined um, that opportunity. Um, currently, there, um, I know that Abishan's um, has made a couple of different rounds of conversations with um, the property owner as far as showing interest to purchase it, mm -hmm. long-term lease it, or even short-term lease it um, to use um, with their upcoming store renovation. Um, I do not believe those conversations have come to fruition okay. um, after more than a couple of rounds. Um, but agree that it's a prime opportunity and a wonderful spot and we'll continue to keep trying to make a collaborative effort for something to, to be there. We've, you know, try to present options for tenants and different things there and we just uh yeah the um, haven't we pivoted away from trying to program it independently we one time talked about the idea of a beer garden there um that was prior to, to arpa but at the same at that time the kind of the the cost of getting in that would have been borne by the by the town was was kind of out, outstripped our resources um so we have pivoted towards um trying to assist adjacent businesses or attract a business to Mr. Pagley's building that might use that space. Um, we have to date have not been successful in um, enabling one of those um, agreements to come to fruition. Um, we, um, upon hearing that this was going to be on the agenda, I reached out to um, an adjacent business again, just well, to obviously on that, Sorry. that uh, we mentioned it, um, just to let them know that we think that their proposed use would be a fantastic use of the space and would like to help in any way. Um, so what? Was bad and forth between people in the real estate division, but um, effectively they had a, a proposed use for the lot that I think would have been um, would have very well suited the town's goals. Um, so we will continue to try to engage with the property owner um, and adjacent businesses. We have kind of moved away from trying to look to program that in a way that we had talked about in the past. Um, but uh, really, I think our our best hope would be if. The owners of adjacent properties could come to some kind of agreement, and we'll see if we what we can do to maybe shorten the distance between where the two parties are. Okay. Has there been any stated uh, reason for resistance, delusions of grandeur? Uh, um, none that I 
I, I may characterize them, but I, I don't feel comfortable characterizing Fine. them. Okay, so it's more like similar to the vacant storefronts. It's like a vacant lot, similar kind of yeah. situation. Oh. I'm sitting my way, so let's put that yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, so while we're talking about that, has there been any development for uh, the corner of High Street and Water Street with jeans? I spoke with um, Scott Parker uh, two weeks ago. He's our LSP waiting for the closure reports on that. Um, we've been waiting for quite a few months. Um, he explained to me the reasons for the delay um, and I uh, understand. Um, he says to me he'll have something to me by the middle of this month, at which time if we can certify that this is a closed property, take it off the mass contingency plan, we'll go up, I'll be coming to you almost right away with a, um, a sketch RFP so we can identify what our criteria are for conveying that property to a private owner if that is the wish of this board. Okay, thank you for the update. Okay, and then what do we have left? Oh, street closure. Something. Halloween. Okay. <laughs> um, the letter, I submitted the formal letter to ask for um, your permission to close High Street the same length as last year. Um, whole run from Water to Union. Um, same hours as last year. Um, it seemed that by all accounts, um, from a lot of feedback, that closing the full length of High Street was a good um, decision. It was a good, safe decision. Um, I know that the, the businesses and the participants um, down um, closer to water on High really appreciated that. Um, and also that we got great feedback from the businesses that they felt that, you know, we communicated well, expectations were clear. It was a good event. Um, so our goal is to repeat that this year. Um, already spoken, met with uh, Chief Coyne, Lieutenant Nelson. Um, again, we're going to, last year we had an increase in the number of officers that were on site. Um, we're going to again have that. Also, just since this goes out to the public, um, we are going to be putting out a call for volunteers for the event itself, not planning it, not lugging around things, but literally just being at the event because the more eyeballs that we have and more people who are signified as a volunteer, um, the better it is because it is a large crowd. Um, not that we have behavioral problems, but just, you know, somebody drops a cell phone, somebody wonders what time the event closes, somebody wander, lets go of their mom's hand and, and wanders off. Um, it's always better to have more than less um, authority figures around. So we're going to be putting out a call that we would love um, some more manpower than we had last year beyond our police department. Um, and that um, so we're making is a request so, to close the street. So requesting to close the street, please. So moved. Second. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I see. Um, last thing, just I threw it in as an FYI. Um, in a couple weeks, on Thursday the 19th, we are hosting here in this room a bilingual seminar um, for the Brazilian American community for people interested in either starting a business or people who have started a business and are wondering how they can properly set up the business legally. Um, we had bilingual office hours a couple of times, twice a month for several months in the spring and the summer. It was well attended, but we did see um, a redundancy of the questions, a lot of the same questions from a lot of different people. So we thought that it would be um, a good idea to do a seminar and invite people to come in and ask questions, hear talk things of what to do, like step one, step two kind of things. We are also um, have invited members of the local like banking community and accountants and some other um, folks um, to come in to be on site to be a resource. So it's going to be a quick presentation and a, quite a bit of Q&A and then an opportunity for people to mill in the room and get to know people who could be a resource. So just an FYI for you guys. Um, we just started um, marketing it yesterday and um, we're hoping for a good turnout. So. Okay.
Um, I would just ask if, the, if you're seeing like regular questions being asked from the business community, if you could just start to like aggregate them and we can hopefully make that information available on our website or and update our, our yep. materials that we have to try and provide some guidance to, to businesses if the same questions are being asked. I think, I think the Portuguese we, information is on we do have We do have um, a certain amount of Portuguese, um, some of our documents translated into Portuguese currently that went up on the website about yeah. a month ago. Um, but we can certainly continue to add to that. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we want to support the community yeah. um, and business owners and entrepreneurs in any way we can. Yeah. I think so. sometimes people just sometimes want that validation of like, I understand this properly, right? So maybe yep. those same questions come up, but that's a great idea. Thank you. All right, and happy to put it on the website if we can okay. make that happen. Uh, yeah. All great. right. Okay. I just have a question. Yeah, with, um, so with the, with ARPA being discussed next. Are you mm -hmm. intending on staying? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for queuing me up. Um, all right. Um, wanted to put uh, this American Rescue Plan Act recommendations um, to continue the discussion on the, the strategy. Um, the timeline to allocate the remaining funds is coming up at the end of this year, so we do have to make some decisions. Um, we don't have to spend the money until the end of 2026, but we do have to allocate and put under contract at the end of this year. So um, this might be kind of an ongoing topic until we decide how to spend the remainder of this. So. Um, this spreadsheet I put together to try and help us understand how much of all the asks that have been made, which ones remain, um, and then how much funds are remaining that we need to allocate. So I think if you're looking at this, there are less funds than we have asks. But we also, too, have a few other things that, under the status of pending, um, may, may or may not come to fruition. So, yes. So, so with the Business Recovery Grant Program and Business Safety Net, did we allocate the full amount for those? That's a good question. Because my understanding was we were, it, it was not completely allocated, Use. right. Yeah. Um, yes. And, and we... Mr. Point, I think we have to the year, you can an update on the uh, authorizations he has and what he's done with it and what's still available and maybe some monies that may not be utilized. Oh. I don't know if you have that. And we, and like I said, we can, we can certainly have this discussion, but if this spreadsheet's not accurate, mm -hmm then maybe we spend the next couple of weeks making it accurate so yeah, that we can... I was just going to say that I appreciate the chair had put this together, which was great, and it gave us a kind of a good roadmap. Um, working with the uh, town accountant to get the current updates on what's been spent. Yeah, so there, there would be the authorization amount, but then actually what's been spent. If, if a department didn't use it all, say, just not just saying out of the blue, like with the radios, if 375 was allocated, but it came in at 350, 360 right. or something. Um, we're getting that information as well as our office is pulling together all the dates as to when these were approved so that we have all the approval dates. I think the chair had put in which were the original requests that by the asterisks and then some of the other add ons that came on. And then, uh, like I said, we're going to fill in that column of what, it ha what has been spent and what's remaining on the money that's been allocated so that it can give you a better uh, total bottom line as to what. It's available. It's approximately about 665. There's some remaining um, requests, uh, there's some remaining requests out there at 665, uh, but that's about how much funds are remaining as well, too. But I think out of some of the allocated money, there may be money that's not going to be spent uh, yeah. out of the allocated money, so that there should be additional funds that can be uh, redirected. Uh, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. just um, you know, just going down the, the list, I know that the auditorium 
chair replacement, we have had zero discussion on that. And I know that yeah. Angelo, as my understanding, had been working with Brian uh, about getting cost. But I mean, I mean, there's, nothing's been buttoned down. And are no. we talking just the floor? Or are we talking about the balcony? I mean, I don't know. I mean, um, do you know what I'm saying? We, no, no, and that's why I kind of wanted to. That's why, I mean, I'm glad you brought the list up because yeah. we really do need to um, take a look at, you know. Exactly, exactly. So I kind of wanted to, right, kind of take a look at this, yeah. determine like what are our action items needed. Like Correct. maybe it's to try and, if we don't have that information from Angela, maybe it's trying to figure out, like, A, do we have that information? B, do we not and Correct. need to re redo it? So, um, so maybe. I mean, because we don't even know if the, I know they just kind of plugged in that amount. Yeah. I mean, is it, is it a realistic? Is it, you know, exactly. I mean, and, and my concern is like time is ticking. So right. I do want to get a little bit more tactical in this and like, you know, we're saying. Well, I was only using that as one example. No, and I, I mean, agree with you there. But I know there, there's got to be more, you know. Yeah. And I think the accuracy of like, to Michael's point of, you know, we allocated that money and maybe it just wasn't all spent, so what do we have? So I think, like I said, I think this is going to be an item on every agenda, mm -hmm. I think, moving forward until mm -hmm. we have finished it. So I would say if anyone has a, an open, like we can put that as an action item in terms of the chair replacement, like do we have the estimate? And if so, what is it? And then we can, you know, certainly continue this. Yeah, I mean, about. just, and, and even on the, um, Brian's list about things in the town hall. Yep. I know they was talking about having the floor refinished, and I know that when we redid the town hall, which was many years ago, Michael, when, when was that actually completed? 1995? 95. 95. Um, the person who had refinished them at the time said, those are not going to be able to be done again. There's, there's no wood left. Yeah. That in reality, that floor would have to be replaced. Okay. So I'm just, you know, I mean, I think that's something that this is one time money and it's only going to be yeah. <laughs> at one time. I mean, and is we all obviously want to keep this up. We, I mean, in the early 90s, the town of Clinton paid at that time was many years ago, it was $2.2 million. So, I mean. Yeah, um, I'm just going off of what's been like officially requested. Correct. If correct. we want to add that to the list and, and have I that mean, discussion. I think it needs to be looked at. And I know that back in those days, I'm like, oh, I think we paid like, I think it was $10,000. Just, I'm not exactly sure it was the exact amount, but it was somewhere around there to have it refinished for. I mean, obviously to replace it would be a substantially more expensive job, but. Always is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's two action items mm -hmm. for that. Mm. I, I mean, you know, when you look at what was requested, what's been allocated, you know, there, it's approximately $1.3 million. That seems to be the difference between those two, those two columns. But, you know, you look at the library Wi-Fi improvements, that was part of the IT upgrade or not? Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's I think what we intended on having it as part of that. So I think that could roll into that. Okay. Uh, I think the, the allocation was uh, for the IT upgrades was uh, 230, so I think that was to include some of that as well too. Okay. And certainly, if, if, if there's money left, we can certainly always use it. But if if that needs to be redirected, I think we could do the uh, the the Wi-Fi cabling and improvements at the library are part of the IT upgrades with the 230. Okay. So. You know, and, I, and also, is, and just to be clear, this was just me trying to hobble together. No, this is, <laughs> so this is great. It may no. not be accurate. No, this and is thank great. You. And that's what I'm kind of looking for, to people to put eyes on it and figure out, like, let's make this as accurate as possible and let's start to kind of really make some decisions on it. I mean, even with, mm -hmm. like, the, the community economic development, right? So yeah. that program, you know, can it be closed and, and what's remaining? Yeah, or, we have to give you an update. I can give you a ballpark update right now, I can give you, an, um, you know, a, a $2 update at your next meeting, but uh, for instance, the two think, yeah. business yeah. assistance programs. Oh, yeah, sorry, Phil, you got to come up to the microphone. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, relative to um, requests from my office, both in the original uh, ARPA subcommittee um, and subsequently, um, let's see, subsequently I requested $75,000 for engineering work connected with the down, with the, cult, the Contra Bank Brook, Contra Bank Brook culvert. Mm -hmm. That's all been expended. Um, subsequently requested, uh, I think, was it $85,000 for the LED signs? That work is still underway. About 10000 has been expended, 9000 But the rest of that will go into contract, and that, that'll be taken care of in, in line with the ARPA requirements. Um, I think I had originally requested $349,000 for Lee. Was that the number? Um, and we have authorized through the first three years of that, so roughly 250000 of that. Yep. When we discussed this in May or June, we said that we revisit before the end of this year so that we met the December 31st timeline in terms of continuing that. Um, I requested $300,000 for business assistance programs. I'm going to guess about 80000 is going to come back. The growth, the safety net program is very successful. A small amount will be coming over from that. Um, for the growth and recovery, you've only committed to one project. There are two, maybe three other people who have expressed an interest in them, and I have been in touch with each of them repeatedly uh, through the summer to say the clock is winding down. We don't have this down nailed down by the end of September. We're going to have to notify the board of selectmen so they can reprogram those funds. But I think something on those are going to come back. I think I had requested hundred thousand dollars for downtown furnishings in the that was part of the subcommittee recommendations that was never acted on by the board. Um, I think there was one hundred twenty-seven thousand and something else. Oh, in 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 facade, in facade improvements, um, I would take that off the board. I would have an eye towards the strand marquee with that, but we directed the the Senate, the Massachusetts State House earmark towards that. So that would that would come off as a request, the the um, facade improvements funds. Because that, that's being provided for by by notice. So there's basically a lot of changes. Yes. Yeah. Well yeah there's the changes there's, being that the the money that was forecast. There's money I requested that wasn't acted on. Yeah. And there's money that um, was authorized, and I'm going to guess about eighty thousand uh -huh. dollars total. If I was to be realistic uh -huh. on this day, uh -huh. we would be looking to reprogram before the end of the year. Uh -huh. okay. And there's money we'd have to act on relative to the downtown coordinator position that we agreed we would act, we would revisit before December thirty first. Okay. Can I just yes. can I make a request for just for the next meeting? Anything that has been completed, mm -hmm. get the final dollar amount. Anything that's been pending, as you mentioned, you yeah. know, with the um, with the, the digital sign boards, if ten thousand's yeah. been yeah. like, can we have? I'll give you numbers on all that. I all have that information, and then that way we'll be able to see what's really left that's unallocated. Yes, I think from you and from whatever every department that has a yeah, pending absolutely. or yeah. Yeah, mine, mine is probably more. I probably have more line items. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a good amount, but not, but, yeah. yeah. And yeah, then, then I think, yeah. And then the strand, I think you know, we allocate 300000 to that, but I think it's, that is a, I don't want to say complicated, but pending some. It is complex. You may Rick, I came to yeah. you, I think, in July saying that by the end of this month, I'd be coming to you with Plan B for your consideration. If okay. it was the pleasure of this board, we might look at um, an alternative way to um, provide uh, funds for that project. Our Plan A being find a dancing partner, find out what they want to do, and go and go 50-50, up to three hundred thousand um, dollars. The um, the clock may run out on Plan A, so I talked to you about coming down with the Plan B. We're saying on a speculative basis. One idea would be that we try to forecast what any potential user of that space would need if it was in accordance with our desires and put that money there um, or possibly um, give, uh, condition it and grant it to the property owner and let them mm -hmm. do and let them decide what the investments are subject to our approval and subject to our clawback. Well, um, uh, I thought we had a committee. I mean, I thought the committee was going to meet and, and hash this all out, I mean, before yeah, yeah, anything yeah. came back to the board. And right. so yeah. I would make that recommendation that that committee gets together and yeah. looks at the you're things right that you're talking about before yeah. you come back into this board with any okay. kind of 
Because I'll tell you, I still have my own reservations about investing in a, or very, handing very money over to a private person. Very understandable. Uh, very understandable. I, I just... Yes. So I'll, I'll, I'll call that committee in the next couple of weeks. Please. Yeah. Yes. It's really... The, the, my hope is that that committee will be reviewing proposals from potential yeah. users of the space, but that hasn't materialized yet. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think the intent was the committee would get rolling once there was an interested partner. It's so it was something to respond right. to. Exactly. But so there's been nothing there to respond to. There's been a lot of traffic, so. So might, yeah, might need to redirect the focus of that to right. be... Okay. I mean, you can make, I mean, there are certain things in life you can make every effort, but if it isn't successful, at some point you have to say, we've tried, and we've tried, you know, in any way that we could, but if it isn't, if it doesn't become a profitable thing for the town, and you're, I mean, because this is valuable money, it's only going to come one way, one time, one way, so uh, I would hate to see taking that much money and just handing it over to a, a, a private person and say, okay, okay, it's yours to do what you, you know, I mean, I, I just think the committee should at least have, sit down and think this whole thing out. And then I mean, that's my feeling on it. Yes. Just and, and then make its recommendation or report to the board. Correct. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Any um, I just had sure. one question, Madam Chair. Yeah. The, the money for the strand, so I just, I might have misunderstood, but the I, my original understanding of it was there was money for the facade, mm -hmm. then there was a hundred thousand from the state, and then there was the three hundred thousand that we're discussing here. Is did you say that the hundred thousand from the state is now going to be put towards the facade, towards the marquee? Yes, and, and I know you may have missed that meeting or meetings, but the state required us to identify the use of the funds. Okay. Um, back, I think in May or June. Okay. Um, and because. Um, facade improvements are explicitly identified in the Department of Treasury guidance, we, we went in that direction. All right. So, you know, if, if, you know, if they want to, if it's a pleasure of the board to offset this by increasing a strand allotment from $300,000 to $400,000 to keep that number the same, that'd be one thing. But that's what we said we were going to do with it. And the reason I say I'm not interested in the facade money now is because there's no way I could spend that in other buildings in downtown and get it under contract by December. If we started on day one. I don't know if I could have got it under contract. But there was, I thought, I thought at one point in time there was like seventy-five thousand dollars that was going towards the the engineering inspection of the marquee and like recommendations for repairing it, and restoring it. No, no, I think it was six thousand dollars. That that came in. That was and that wasn't ARPA funds. That was no, not ARPA. ARPA. There, there, there was a there was a separate. There was the, the the money from the state, the money we were discussing with ARPA, but there was there was money allocated that was designated specifically to the inspection of the marquee and the uh, refurbishment of the of the marquee. No, we've never voted on a large number for the actual reconstruction of the marquee. You guys did vote to use community development funds to hire an engineer to do a structural assessment. Yeah. Yeah. And, but that was on the order of six or seven thousand dollars. It was it wasn't. It wasn't a construction plan. Okay, I'm gonna have to look through my notes because that, that that's not something's not jiving. I mean, does do you have, uh, does anyone else? <laughs> that, that's my recollection. I don't yeah. I don't recall ever bringing you a dollar amount for the marquee re renovation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's try and button everything up so we can. Yeah, I'll come back at the next meeting. And, and not, that's not, I, sorry, Phil, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I meant like just generally. You yeah, know, no, I, I, I realize <laughs> as I, happen, well, I happen to be the one who's You just happen that. to be here yeah. <laughs> when we're talking about it, but well, I will follow up with you to, to start to figure out what the like, remaining budget is, or, or the remaining amount is, and, and okay, so then make this a little bit more complete. And that'll be in two weeks. Pause on the third? Yes. Mm, yeah. Two Excellent. Weeks. Okay. And I will reach out to you. About the committee, we see if we can yep. maybe have a discussion before that. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, citizens' dog, dog park. Uh, I'd like to initiate a discussion about the citizens' dog park committee in response to the petition at the annual town meeting. Madam Chair, um, yeah, I, I understand there were there was a citizen petition at town meeting to. Um, to uh, look into a dog park, it was tabled, I think, um, but um, I'm happy to chair a citizens committee to look into 
sites and funding. Just some background. Uh, Northboro recently, I think we sh uh, news article shared. I have full plans if anyone wants to full schematics on this thing. Um, Northboro opened a park recently. Um, 1.2 acres, play areas for both dog, large and small dogs, including pavilion, mutt mitt station, stone dust play areas, water fountain benches, and boulders for play, storm rider mitigation, 10 space, parked, uh, paid, uh, paid parking lot, and overflow parking area for additional 10 cars. Um, the reason I'm covering this is, I, I think this is, while well, I was told online that this was a massive project, it's 1.2 acres, which I, I think North Row and I, and, and Clinton are, are decent comps. Um, I, I just want to manage expectations and that I think the citizens petitioners um, budgeted 69 and change. This was um, a total of about 585,000. Design was 102, uh, nine and uh, sorry, construction, sorry, construction was 585 and, and adding a design of 102, nine. So that takes us to 687. Uh, which is considerably more than $69,000. Um, they paid for this out of Community Preservation Act funds and two grants from a foundation. Uh, the grants totaled $275,000. Unfortunately, that grant um, organization does not provide dog grants anymore. So uh, we have neither Community Preservation Act funds or this available grant. I'm told that uh, there are some people in town looking into grants, but um, again, managing expectations that for a, a decent sized, I would argue not massive, uh, dog park to accommodate what this town needs is gonna cost considerably more than $70,000. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible, but combining that with the uh, uh, lack of um, potential sites, um, it's a bit of an uphill climb. I'm, I have no doubt that um, the people in town who are clamoring for this dog park, rightfully so, um, can uh, come together, and I'm happy to help them do that. I would just ask that um, they understand that this board is not driving this effort, they are. So um, if anyone's interested in serving on this committee, if they want to contact our office, I guess we can post that through all the normal channels. Mm -hmm. We'll see what we get and then uh, go from there. Um, like I said, I just want everyone to understand that this is um, considerably more complicated than just uh, putting up a fence and some bowls out for dogs to drink from. Um, as a new dog owner, uh, we're coming up on our one year anniversary, welcome aboard, Harry. Um, I know my wife would certainly appreciate the spot, um, but she also understands the uh, complexities involved. So um, I will be the sole uh, representative of 86 R Street, I think. So, but you're, uh, I will chair. You're offering to chair? Yeah. So, committee for dogs, but yes, committee for veterans, no. Uh, okay. Yeah, I didn't say anything. But, but <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, okay. Do you want to work with Michael? On yeah. There? I'll put something on the something web page, and we'll get something on there. To mm -hmm. explore grant opportunities and whatnot, feasibility. Yeah, the people in Northboro are happy to talk to me about this. Um, and the, the planning director also worked on a place in Millbury, um, Butler Farm Park Park. So we have a resource there, and she's, um, like I said, willing to talk to us. I was um, obviously taken aback by the price tag, but looking at the, uh, the plans, yeah, it's, these are complicated things, and we want to do it right. So um, again, I have no doubt that with the right citizen volunteers, we can do this right. I'm looking forward to um, getting them together. On to cannabis host community agreement updates. Um, town solicitor has drafted updated host community agreements to conform with the new cannabis control commission regulations that have been requested by the following business, businesses. KRD Growers LLC and MAIA Advanced Organics. Yeah, uh, Madam Chair, yeah. So this is K KRD Growers LLC. They're down located on uh, Parker Street. So this is consistent with the other ones that have been before the board the last month or so. This is just a, a new HCA that reflects the new statute. So you have two in front of you. You got the KRD Growers, which I just mentioned is down on Parker Street. And the other one that you have is the MAIA Advanced Organics. Um, they're not, they're on, their location is Green Street, but they only have provisional licenses right now. So they're not up and operating. 
unlike KRD Growers, which is everyone knows, that's, that's one of our, our retail locations. So what I'd be looking for the board is to vote separately on the, first on the KRD Growers LLC, HCA, and then on the uh, MAIA Advanced or Organics HCA. Uh, and then once approved, these, these new HCAs will replace the, uh, the ones that were signed back three, four years ago. I'll make a motion to Update the host community agreement to conform to new Cannabis Control Commission regulations uh, requested by KRD Growers, LLC, uh, 89 Parker Street. I'll so move. I mean, I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 4-1. I'll make a motion to update the host community agreement to conform to new Cannabis Control Commission regulations that have been requested by MAIA Advanced Organics Incorporated, 1R and 3R Green Street. Second. Any discussion? Yes, I, I do, Madam Chairman. Sure. Um, Bob, is that, are they actually in business? Because no, I had heard they, they, they don't, they don't, they, the MAIA Advanced Organics, they do not have a final license yet. So, um, they're, you know, they're, it's still pending whether or not they ever open for business. Who knows? But as of right now, they do not have a final license issued by the cannabis. But are control. they actually, I mean, I had heard they were doing nothing down there. They, they, yeah. Uh, they, they tell us that they, you know, they, they obviously reached out to us and wanted to extend the HCA, whether or not they actually ever get a final license and actually move forward. I mean, as, as the board may recall, we have... I don't know how many the board has signed over the years, but I think mm -hmm. right now, yeah. by, the only license that we have out there, we have KRD Growers, which is one mm -hmm. of our retailers. We have um, SQ Causeway, which is a delivery carrier. That license has been issued, and you, we updated that HCA uh, last month, I believe. The two Tyka licenses, uh, that business is, is not operating right now. So Tyka had a retailer and a product manufacturer license. They, they right now are not even operating. Then can I just, on the Tyka thing, so is that like a liquor license they can hold that for, for forever until? That, that's a good question. Because we two of those. I, I, I don't think they can hold those. For, it's, 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 we're looking into that right now and okay. how those work. I, I don't, with the Cannabis Control Commission having so much regulation over these licenses, I don't think it's the same thing you do like with a liquor license. I think it's, it's much more regulated, but who, but, but who knows? Um, as of right now, that license is still, you know, in, in Tyka's name, but they are not operating. And then, of course, we have um, Liberty Compassion down on Brook Street. That's their product manufacturer, product cultivator. Um, and the other, the, so the, really, there's, there's four licenses right now where I, you know, we have final licenses issued in, in, in Clinton, uh, you know, taking out Tiger Green. So, and we probably have, I don't know how many we have out there, but it's, it's a good question. You know, we, we, you know, these HCAs are out there, but whether or not they ever get up and operating, it, it's all dependent upon the company. Well, I just, Mr. Uh, Madam Chairman, I don't intend to vote for this. I just think that, you know, giving all of those out, it just doesn't even look like half these places are more than half are even going to. Yeah. But that's, I don't intend to vote in favor of it on this second one. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Opposed. Three, two. Or on licenses, I did see that Boston just approved 250 liquor licenses for, or the state legislature for Boston. I think we were in five years for, for five. So anybody that's listening, they can uh, even medium track that since it's obviously not being fast track. Um, we appreciate it. Okay. Town Administrator Report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a few things to bring to the board's attention. Um, Yesterday, there was a groundbreaking ceremony for uh, the, the new wheat building, United Way Tri-County. Uh, hopefully, that's a major step, milestone in the process to start moving forward with that project. Um, they still have a ways to go, still finalizing the funding. Uh, but a big boost was uh, Congresswoman Laurie Trahan was here yesterday. And a big boost is that she was able to get a million dollar earmark of federal funds for the project. So that really moved it forward to get into this phase where they think it's now a, a definite uh, reality that it's gonna, uh, gonna happen. So it's, uh, that was good news. So 
Uh, second is we just heard uh, recently, a couple days ago, that the uh, US uh, EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, will be taking over the removal action for the soil pile at 172 Sterling Street at the uh, former Rock Besto site. Um, so at least they'll take that pile will be removed. Uh, we did get some other funding from other sources, uh, which then can be used on other areas of the site to do environmental cleanup as well too. So, um, so hopefully it's some good news that after all this time and with Mr. Duffy's hard work, um, that funding is actually coming in to try to uh, move forward on that on that parcel. Uh, it's such a visible site uh, that we can get deal with some of the environmental issues so that we can get it cleared and then try to put out for a proposal uh, to get it redeveloped. So I don't know, Phil, if you wanted to add anything to that. Got to come to the table, Phil. Sorry. Only I'm almost embarrassed to say it would be bad yeah, we distribute seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of funding from one EPA program in mass development. A uh, separate division of EPA working with the Commonwealth has stepped in to take care of the asbestos debris pile. Conversations with EPA from their remediation program says that we can reprogram those funds for other um, contaminated areas on the site. So we just yeah we went from seven fifty to one point five. So we'll be, yeah I know and work. <laughs> It's, it's only because I forgot to call one division and tell them that we got the grant. <laughs> so, um, so, so um, I, I reached out to... Um, I know. I know, honest to gosh. Yeah, the, um, it's a good approach. So now we have to identify where we're going to um, um, use those funds. We have some time. EPA has a prescription against, prohibition against using uh, funds from multiple sources on the same site at the same time. So we won't begin that work. The, um, I spoke with Sherry Banks today from the removal division. They hope to have that work done, ideally by the middle of November, so hopefully by Thanksgiving. Um, and then we can begin to do procurement and other activity towards a phase two. Um, my guess is that we're going to address um, areas that are contaminated by petroleum uh, products, volatile organic compounds, some trace metals that are at the rear and within the site. Um, the big nugget is the zinc at the northeast corner of the site. Um, I don't think 750, I think I, that I haven't yet had extensive conversations with our uh, LSP and engineering consultant, environmental engineering consultant. I think we're probably going to clear out some more stuff in the middle and at the back end of the property, uh, which will um, make the site more, the redevelopable, redevelopability of the site more versatile. There'll be fewer things you have to work around. So. Um, it's very exciting. Very exciting to, to get that news, completely unexpected news. And like I said, I, I, I'm almost embarrassed to say we got it. So. <laughs> that so. is great news. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. The next item, just wanted to share the Conservation Commission had received through the uh, Mass Department of Conservation and Recreation the stewardship plan uh, grant for Russia Farm that the board had supported. Um, so they were uh, grateful to the board for that and, uh, and Gloria Parkinson excited to get started on that project there. Um, carriage House renovation project, that is out to bid. Uh, bids are due September 18th. The design has been completed. Now we have the construction bids and uh, hopefully they can get started on that for the winter renovation for the winter to create that uh, fitness center there. Um, and then just uh, to let the board know, we're doing weekly project meetings on the e-permitting software uh, rollout and the IT upgrade. Uh, the e-permitting uh, had some delays with uh, trying to reconcile database um, so that when you go in and you start an application, when you uh, put in a uh, street address, it'll automatically populate all the information. Um, there seem to be some issues with the software company and the database that our, our uh, vendor uses for our parcel uh, properties, uh, but that I've been told has been resolved um, uh, last week and uh, now we're having uh, final meetings to make sure all of the assistant town administrator had been working on 
uh, doing all the uh, applications and the forms of getting all the departments uh, loaded. So uh, I'll be meeting with them tomorrow, um, Friday. So meeting with the IT tomorrow and the e-permitting on Friday to see that uh, if everything is at that final step that we could start doing some training. And then once we have the training, we can then go live on that e-permitting project. So, uh, so that should be coming shortly. And the IT upgrade project, um, again, there was some delay there. Uh, they took on the public safety departments to be part of the project, which I, which I think was great. Um, but they, they had to create a whole separate uh, domain within our cloud environment to, in order to keep all of the confidential information separate. Uh, they probably will also be getting a different extension on their email so that that will all go to a confidential area on the uh, on the cloud as well too. So uh, maybe instead of clintonma.gov, it might be police.clintonma.gov, just something a little to distinguish a little bit uh, on, on that end as well. Um, but they, again, I'll be meeting with them tomorrow. So they tell me that uh, they're fairly close to finalizing the cloud environment, which then next week we're going to have our project meeting to talk about onboarding at that point. So, uh, so we'll roll out the email. The cloud environment will be set up, we'll roll out the email first, then they'll transfer all the files from our, from our servers, our, our hardware uh, servers, and then they'll uh, do all the uh, PC uh, changeouts uh, of all the computers. Uh, and then the final piece will be the phone system. So, so we're moving moving forward on that. And I've asked them to do weekly project updates so that we can make sure that this starts moving uh, along fairly quickly. So, so that's what I have for today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next up is uh, some administrative business. Um, the Parks and Recreation Department is requesting the use of the Clinton Town Hall Auditorium on Saturday, December 7th, 2024, to host the annual Holiday Pops concert. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Um, the Clinton Public Schools basketball. Basketball program is requesting use of the Clinton Town Hall Auditorium on Saturday, November 30th, 2024, to host their annual fundraiser event. Um, uh, I can speak oh, sorry. to this. Okay. So, I, well, I'll, I'll uh, abstain. Um, this is the annual cornhole tournament that benefits um, the boys and girls programs through. Uh, high school all the way down to the middle school. Um, in the past, the, the funds that have been raised have been used uh, for equipment, um, like a basketball shooting machine or uh, warm-ups, um, things that enrich the experience of the, the student athletes. Uh, the, the Clinton Boosters uh, had recommended um, a larger venue and we have been using the PAV the last few years. Um, and that is the nature of the request. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we approve a request from Clinton Public Schools basketball for use of the Clinton Town Hall Auditorium on Saturday, November 30th, 2024, to host our annual fundraiser event. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained. Abstained. On. Okay, well, the new business. Uh, the American Cancer Society is requesting permission to allow participants in their annual bicycle ride fundraiser to travel through Clinton along Lancaster Road on Sunday, September 22nd, tw uh, 2024. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Uh, the Clinton Conservation Greenway Trust is requesting permission to allow participants in the Mass Central Rail Trail inaugural test ride to travel through the streets of Clinton on Saturday, September 21st, 2024, as part of a bicycle event along the rail trail from Northampton to Boston, advocating for the importance and benefits of completing the trail. So moved. 
Uh, uh, second. Any discussion? Do we have a time or like, are we gonna have to shut down roads? Uh, yeah. There's this, with the streets Details. of Clinton, I, I envisioned the trail <laughs> itself, but it, it seems like a little more. Yeah, than that. I think that they're mostly gonna try to stay on the I'm trail, sure. but there's gonna be portions where the yeah. trail isn't there. So uh, I think they're going, when they come into Clinton, uh, they will be doing around, I think around 4.30, they're gonna be doing a short little talk around the reservoir just about the Clinton Trail, then I think they're then gonna go on to the trail. Um, not sure how they're gonna get there, so that's why I think they're using the streets and the yeah. trail, and as much as they can. As part of going on the trail and, and, and trying to um, you know, do some education about it, it's also kind of doing for themselves uh, a analysis as to what areas are well done, what are difficult, what are undeveloped, and so I guess they're going to try to stay on the trail as much as they can. Uh, so it will be a little bit coming in on the roads, but then going on the trail, then maybe having to get back out onto, uh, onto Berlin Road again to continue on uh, to, the next, to the next journey. So it is a little bit of combination of both. Okay. I would just ask them if once they kind of nailed that down or if they have been, as their plans evolve, if they could just at least give a heads up to the police department, sure. if not us, both would be great. Yeah. Um, okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye zero. Um, the president of the United Way of Tri-County um, has sent a letter requesting consideration for a waiver or reduction in fee for the building permit um, for construction of the wheat facility on High Street in Clinton. Um, that was recently discussed in the groundbreaking report. I have a question on that. Yeah. So do we have an idea of what the total amount of those fees are? I don't, uh, but we can get that. I think it would be based on what the estimate of the building would be, so, um, so we can get that. I don't think this is anything, uh, obviously the building isn't starting yet. yet. It will be a while, so it isn't anything so we certainly can try to collect all that information and table it for a future meeting. Yeah. But at least it introduces the concept to the board that they've, that they've asked for this. Yeah. You know, the reason why I ask is just based on um, the inspectional services, this is, you know, those departments depend on uh, the revenue generated. Um, and I would like to see what that total amount would be roughly before making any commitment. Okay. okay. Yeah, let's work on that. I think you have to be careful of that, too. If you make an exception for one. Um, yeah, good point. Yeah, let's gather some more info about that. So and especially can, with the school coming up as well, right? Is that... Are we paying ourselves for that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. More info to come. Did we do the, the cancer ride thing? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we did. All right. Yeah, we did that earlier. Sorry. Um... Okay, the Permanent Building Committee is recommending approval of a contract award for the construction of the Clinton Middle School project to Fontaine Brothers. So, so moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, just a point of clarification. In the, in the front page, it's spelled Fountain, and on this page, yeah. it's Fontaine. So as long as we're signing this 100-something million contract to the right people, yeah. um, that's all I would ask. Okay. Yeah. Fontaine. Missed by E. Yep. Thank you. Valentine. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nine zero. Any committee reports? Did uh, we have a personal hiring? Personnel recruiting. Oh, hiring. sorry. Oh, God. Thank you. Personnel sure. recruiting, hiring update. Can you give a brief update on where that stands? You got a few big, big boys out there. Sure, Madam Chair. Thank you. Just there are four, currently four active uh, openings for department uh, positions. One is the uh, building inspector and assistant town administrator. Those positions have been advertised, so those are, are live uh, accepting applicants. The human resource manager, uh, that has been advertised. We've received uh, resumes. Uh, we've just finalized the review committee, and they will be meeting next week to begin going through the resumes for that position. 
the treasurer collector position, uh, what I am looking to do on the next step, um, as we know, it's been a difficult position to fill uh, all across the state. Um, there are a number, number of communities that are looking for this position right now. So what I'm looking to do, uh, kind of to take a pause, uh, we've already advertised twice, to kind of take a pause. And uh, John Kittredge, our uh, treasurer uh, collector that retired, he agreed to stay on for the summer for interim. Uh, but I think he is looking to kind of move ahead with different things in his life as well. So what I'd like to do, uh, there are some good uh, consulting firms there that will give us uh, X amount of hours per week uh, that will uh, kind of head up uh, that department for us in the interim uh, until we kind of, you know, decide where we're, where we're going with this in a permanent level position. Uh, they, we have some firms that have been recommended by our auditor, DOR, uh, so companies out there that I think will, you know, give us 15, uh, you know, hours or plus whatever we need uh, per week. Uh, which I think will be helpful uh, to kind of get things, you know, where we need to, uh, and then look to next steps from there. So that's kind of my plan at this point. But um, but we've been, you know, keeping up with the vital aspects of the office. Um, um, but now we're going to have another vacancy in that position. Uh, that one uh, as of Friday. Assistant Treasurer Collector, and uh, uh, who heads up the payroll, um, uh, Andrea uh, Ween. We appreciate her service to the town. She'll be uh, finishing up uh, with the uh, office on Friday, uh, so that will be advertised immediately as well too uh, to bring people in. Uh, we did do some training today with uh, our payroll company for Harpers with the current staff uh, so that we will have somebody that will be able to fill in to, to take over payroll. So uh, so there's a lot happening in that office, but we're keeping on top of it and uh, and getting through with what needs to get done and uh, and making sure that uh, major, major things get accomplished. So. I just, I just, go ahead. Go, go for it. I was going to say, Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. I was on, on the, uh, the committee and... Um, um, with the consultants, we, we did learn a lot in being that uh, specialized positions are almost impossible to fill. And um, it, so Clinton's not unique in this. You know, we have, as Michael said, that we have gone two rounds with this. And um, it seems to be that the venue that Michael is going to choose to, to get us through this um, is really the way to go. Because I think the importance of that position, it, you have to make sure you have a qualified person that has the background and has the knowledge of the position. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think it's the best way to go in the best interests of the town. I agree. Excellent. So what would the next step be as far as determining, you know, a consultant to move forward with? And how quickly can we do this? Yeah, we should be able to do that fairly quickly. So I'll, I'll uh, get reach out. I'm getting proposals from the a couple of the good companies that have been recommended to me. Get some proposals from them, and then uh, uh, you know hopefully by next week I'll have more information on that and see what how long it will take for them to come in and get started and and help with Mr. Kittredge. I'm sure will help with the transition as well too. So uh, and then and then that you know again with that. That that firm coming in, then they can, I think, hopefully help us, you know, as to where we should go next from here once they come in. So, so would, would the the uh, funds allocated for that position, uh, for the salary of that position, would just be redirected towards exactly. the consultation? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Because they would essentially be the um, interim treasurer, so that salary could be used for that purpose. Yep. Thank you. Madam Chair, yeah. under old new business, um, what's the status of the town administrator evaluation and townwide goals? Is that something that's going to be on the agenda yeah. coming up? Yeah. Um, when Michael and I discussed like prioritization, 
and we have been prioritizing anything related to hiring, human resources, or legal, just based on the fact that we have some um, multiple high-level positions that all roll up to the town administrator. Um, so that was a kind of um, decided effort to just kind of pause that, but do anticipate kind of bringing that back for discussion um, in the fall. Just needed to get through um, and kind of strategize if, if time is finite, then we need to focus on a few other things first. Yeah. And, and we were able to get uh, access to the evaluation tool, so mm -hmm. we'll give those credentials to the chair and uh, then that can, at least the board can do that piece on the evaluation. Yeah, thank you. Shouldn't the, the, the I mean, the evaluation is a pretty important part of our responsibility. The decision to postpone it, shouldn't that be something that the board decides? Have we decided the timeline on it in the past? I believe so, yeah. I'll recall, but right now, operations and some specific things have been the focus of both myself and Michael. Um, and it has not been forgotten. We're still evaluating him for the same time frame than it would be. But just, um, like I said, if we have to prioritize, I chose to set that aside for a few weeks while we push through some of these issues related to, like I said, assistant town administrator, human resources director, treasurer collector, and the day-to-day -day operations that that requires. Um, so, Madam Chairman, I'd just to say I'd like to commend you for taking that leadership role on, and I'm thank you. absolutely comfortable with your decision. Thank you. And yeah. like I said, it hasn't been forgotten. We do have kind of an ongoing list of things that we are certainly looking to move forward on, but like I said, if, if we only have X amount of hours, uh, yeah, well, why, I, what is, we just can't. Why are you so heavily involved in the hiring process that you, to the point where we have to delay the evaluation? Don't we, have, know, right? don't we have resources that handle hiring and I don't, I don't, I don't understand the, well, I don't understand the need for, I don't understand the need well, to delay can, the evaluation. That's and fine. I, and I, and I think that it should be a decision that the board makes, not, not okay. one person. Well, your feedback is noted. Thank you. Any more discussion? I have a couple things under all the new mm -hmm. uh, business. So one of them pertains to um, the current vacancies uh, with department heads within the town hall. So. Any employees within that department, would they now report directly to Mr. Ward? So, for example, within permitting with the building inspector uh, retiring or the treasurer collector, would those employees report directly to you? I think they would if there wasn't anyone in that role. So I think, um, yeah, if, if, the, if those positions were vacated, then they definitely would would come under, you know, my daily um, jurisdiction. But I think right now we do have people in in those spots, and I think they intend on staying coverage until we find somebody. Uh, so, and the reason why I ask is, so with going the role of the consultant, mm -hmm. those employees would be reporting to you, right? They wouldn't report to the consultant? I think if we make the consultant interim treasurer, I think that person could have oversight of them. I mean, certainly it's going to be a weekly um, discussions that I'm going to be having with that person, with the department, keeping on top of what's going on. Um, but it's something we could look into, and uh, you know, certainly I don't not opposed not opposed to that, and we could maybe just have a conversation with town council as to who who should uh, take on that on that role. Yeah. So I would just like to throw it out there for the for consideration, you know, for your consideration and the board's consideration where, you know, if we have if we have uh, people who are kind of a, a bridge to the to the next um, and if they're not working, you know, full time hours, um, then I would think that 
the town administrator having those pe those employees report to the town administrator would make sense based upon the fact that you're here full time. Oh sure. Um, and even from a consultation piece of it, where right. you know if if people are requesting time off, then you know I think that should really be directed towards you, in my opinion. But at least to have that uh, come up with a game plan for right. that. But I would say because um, technically right now we don't have. You know, John Kittredge is not the treasurer, and Jimmy Salmon is not the building inspector, for, right? They mm -hmm. both gave notice, even though they're filling in. Um, and then the other, the other piece of it was uh, related to the customer service recommendations that the select board approved. So I just wanted to kind of get a status update on, um, I know there was discussion on, uh, there was approval on standardizing the hours of operation within the town hall, um, eight to four, PM, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And if there were any departments that felt that they would like consideration outside of those hours that they were going to uh, present, present that. Um, and secondly, just the status of um, the practice of eating lunch or banking the lunch in order to leave earlier, um, that that practice has, uh, that ceased to happen um, so i'm just curious on on where we are with that yeah yeah i haven't i haven't had a uh, request to change hours and i will you know follow up on that to make sure that everyone is is uh, adhering to that but that all should be now eight to four and with changes that are taking place it's all kind of falling into place anyway so everyone should be eight to four that's that's my that's my uh my uh, initiative, I mean, not initiative, but my intent. So. Excellent. That's it for me. One point of clarification, Madam Chair. Um, mm -hmm. I was going through the correspondence section of our packet and thrilled to see uh, a letter from the Department of Energy Resources notifying us that uh, we were awarded a grant of $185,886 for um, energy efficiency projects uh, looks like lighting and ventilation at the elementary and high schools. Then I remembered that uh, town meeting in its infinite wisdom voted to change our zoning code. So I checked with the state and since we are no longer a green community, we won't be receiving the money after all. So if you got the check, don't spend it and please don't start any project because we're gonna have to pay for it. So voting has consequences. Again, everyone in town's gonna say what they want. Yep. That's all. Okay. All right. Committee reports. One. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Sorry, Madam Chair. The uh, public access, um, the public public cable committee did meet. Um, I'm still working on the minutes. Uh, one of the things we did discuss that um, I'll put it on the uh, I'll request it as an agenda topic for the next meeting was sending a letter out to um, all municipal boards, letting them know that um, we would like to start. Uh, we have the infrastructure set up and we have the ability now to, um, we don't actually need a person. We can film when there's meetings going on. So um, we will be um, making a push to film all uh, public municipal meetings in the future. So we'll, um, I'll get in touch with you about like how to draft that letter out to the boards and yeah, sounds good. I was kind of interested too, like based on new membership and hopefully breathing some new life into some of the committees who haven't met in a while is um, going through like expectations about like when their agenda should be posted, meeting minutes, open meeting law. We'll add filming to that um, just to kind of make it very clear that um, what we're looking to accomplish here. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Community announcements. Old Home Day will be held this week on Friday, September 6th from 5 to 10 and Saturday, September 7th from 10 to 3. Um, come on down. Should be a fun time. And that's it for community announcements. You want to plug it? Madam Chair, I just sure. have one thing to, um, to bring up. The, uh, I had received uh, news today that Mrs. Mary Richards had passed away this past week. Um, Mrs. Richards had been heavily involved in both local and uh, 
state and national uh, politics. Um, she was very, um, the enthusiasm, it was commendable. Um, she was involved, you know, she involved in, it seemed like every election. Um, and uh, that's, that's a, a, a big loss for the, for the town of Clinton. And, um, you know, I wish the family condolences and um, she will be, she'll be missed. Thank you for that update, having heard. So condolences to her family. Thank you. Um, okay, that is the end of our agenda. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.